a program that encourages African-American boys to read while they're waiting their turn at the barbershop has come to Detroit. Originating in Harlem, the Barbershop Books Initiative aims to increase literacy among black boys. The U.S. Department of Education says more than 85% of fourth grade African-American males are not proficient in reading. The program generates child-friendly reading spaces in barber shops and provides early literacy training to barbers. Joining me now is the Detroit program manager, Reverend Lonnie Peake, along with Saul Green, who is owner of Michigan Barber School, the first Detroit location to participate. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks for having us, yeah. Thank you. So what a great idea, right? We were talking before the show about how much time we all spent <laughs> in barber shops, yeah. mostly as kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the idea that you could make good use of that time uh, is is really ingenious. I think it, it, it's the culture of the barbershop, particularly the black barbershop. As I said earlier, you know, the barbershop is the black man's country club. <laughs> you know, you, in order to join, you just go. You just go. <laughs> I used to, as I mentioned to, I used to just go and sit. My uncle owned a barbershop in Nashville Park, New Jersey, and I would just go and sit and listen, mm -hmm. and you gain so much wisdom. <laughs> so what we have now is the place where you're going to come to get your hair cut with, with, with your, your, your youngster. And now we move it into an educational piece where he can learn yeah. while he's sitting there. Yeah. So what greater uh, environment than to have books in the barbershop? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michigan Barber School is the first place to participate. Uh, talk about why. Stephen, it, it made sense. Uh, Michigan Barber School, first of all, has been around for 72 years. It's probably, if not the oldest, but one of the oldest is black businesses in the state of Michigan. Yeah. And so we've seen through the generations the uh, parents bringing their young sons in. And, and the opportunity that uh, Lonnie has described is just ripe for that environment. As I spend time in the barber school, one of the things that I find most um, um, heartening is a number of people who come up to me and said, I came here as a child, mm -hmm. I'm bringing my son <laughs> here. <laughs> and so you see this intergenerational mm -hmm. communal aspect of a barber shop and the barber school represents that, Michigan Barber School represents that in the state of Michigan probably more than any other place. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, tell me how the program works, where you get the books and how, okay. who's providing the training to the barbers? And it's, a, it's a national program, Stephen, that we're in about 14 states. Uh -huh. And it's coming out of New York, and they decided they want to come into Michigan. So obviously, you can't come into Michigan unless you come into Detroit. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, Wayne Great Start Collaborative was the organization that they came to. And uh, 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 Kathleen Alexandro came to me and asked me, Hey, I know you got good tentacles out in the community. We want you to help us organize this. And so we jumped in it. So our role is program managers. So what we do is that we do the coordination, the assisting the placement of it, and then come, around, come back around. There's been training for the barbers. We've kicked off now, and now we're starting to put the books in the individual barber shops. And, and Saul hosted us for our first press conference. Mm -hmm. And you know you got four, you got fifty two chairs out there. Yes. He yes. has a, little, a young city out yeah, there. Right. <laughs> city of barbers. Yeah, city of barbers, man. <laughs> so we went to Saul first, and he was very gracious <laughs> and agreed to open the door. So we kicked it off at his shop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saul, I, I've got you here. I would be remiss if I didn't let you talk about the importance of. Uh, the, 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 the trade and skill of barbers in your family. This is not just work for you. This is quite a personal passion. It, it, it absolutely is. Like I um, said earlier, my, my dad started the Michigan Barber School mm -hmm. in 1947. He was part of that great migration coming up from East Point, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. His dad had had a barber shop. He was a graduate of Morehouse College with a degree in sociology, got here, took several social, uh, sociology related jobs, but his entrepreneurial spirit yeah. took over mm -hmm. and he realized that this was an avenue for black 
men generally mm -hmm. to to determine to develop a skill yeah. and to become their own um, uh, business owners. And so, over these seventy-two years, we have uh, educated and placed thousands of mm. black barbers in uh, in the Detroit metropolitan area and really throughout the state. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> it was my dad, my brother, my two brothers ran it. I am now in there running it because uh, <laughs> uh, it was my time. Right. I'm a barber. Yeah. And and yeah. uh, so it's, it is. It's See, it's a, interesting that you call yourself a barber. I mean, most people in this community who know right, you right, right, right. know you as an attorney, which you also are, but, uh, yeah. but you're a barber. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I claim it proudly. Yeah. Uh, I've often said to people in terms of any success I've had as a lawyer, a lot of it probably has to do with the time I spent in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Because the way you have to engage people and deal with problem solving, yeah. a lot of that you learn through the That's interaction really that happens so often in a barbershop yeah. setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that stat that I read in the, in the intro, 85% yes. of fourth grade. Boy, I, you know, I, I knew that we had a challenge. Mm -hmm. With that, I don't think I knew it was quite that mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Yeah. And and as you, I don't have to tell you, Steve, but it, you know, being able to read your written word is your gateway to success. Sure. Right. So we think that this particular no, we know that this particular program is going to buy, provide access and entertainment because the books are all selected black 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 boys. Okay. And they're colorful. The stand sets up in the barber shop. They can come. They can take a look at the book. Now, some barbershops have been reported, hey, the book is kind of like disappearing. <laughs> they're taking the yeah, book. They're take That's not well, a bad that thing, That ain't right? all bad, man. Let them have a book. Yeah, Don't right. beat them up. <laughs> the worst thing is that there's another book in somebody's home. Right? That's right. That's right. And so we replace it. Uh, we'll go around monthly, take a look at what's happening, talk to the barber, and we're replacing it. Right now, we have 24 barbers on our list. We have ramped up about eight. Okay. And so now we're moving to, to bring on the others. We don't want we want to get it where it's manageable. We don't yeah. just want to have a thousand barbershops. We would eventually, since this is a pilot, we're working it. And like we said, Saul has been very helpful. And we had a training for the barbers a couple of weeks ago at Wayne County Community College. They came in, we fed them, we trained them, and we was trying to get out of there, but they kept <laughs> asking us questions. Hey, all right, man, we've been here for two hours. <laughs> anyway, we're very excited about the program. Yeah. And it's another niche in Detroit. It's a neighborhood program in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that importance, that connection of barber shops to neighborhoods is, yes. is everything uh, yes. in the city. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, how are the barbers responding? Uh, to this. They, they, they see it as an excellent opportunity to, to interact with young people. Yeah. It's interesting, a lot of the students, they bring their children to, uh, uh, while the they're yeah. putting in their time. This gives them an opportunity to give their children something concrete to work yeah. on while they're putting in their hours. It's a natural fit. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, congratulations and uh, thanks for being here. Sure. Good, yeah. good. Thank you. Good to see you both. Thanks for having us, man. <laughs> Thank you.